course of making tools and applications, I find it's helpful to have a few file paths for various purposes that we need to read and write files. So the kinds of file paths I'm going to be making queries for today are the current working directory, the path to the current executable file, uh, the path for user config and user data, user plugins, that kind of stuff, and a path where temporary files can go. Each of these file paths has a unique role to play in how our programs can interact with the file system. So, for instance, the purpose of the current working directory is that, unlike any of the other options, it is something the user controls every time that they run a program. So it can be used as a way for the user to communicate a important relevant directory where some action should take place implicitly. The path to the executable file, or the binary file if you prefer, gives us a way to define the concept of a bundle of files or a package, since usually users aren't going to change a lot of stuff inside that folder. In fact, we could encourage them to never change stuff in this unless they're trying to hack around and possibly break things. Uh, since that's what we are going to expect, though, that they're not changing things, we can go ahead and say that any file we require to be with the package, that, you know, we require that we find a way to open up a particular DLL or a font file or some images or whatever, whatever besides the main executable we want the executable to be able to depend on, we can just place it into those packages. And when we need to find them, we can use the path to the binary, or again, the path to the executable file, to find those other required files as well. A lot of the time tools and applications can benefit from having extensions or configurations that are chosen by the user and applied to that user anytime they use the program. But there's a little bit of a problem. If we expect the user to use that current working directory we already have to find those extensions, then they can't really use the current working directory to move the program around and point at different paths anymore, because then they would have to move all of those extensions and configurations. And we can't expect them to use the binary path because we've already said we kind of don't want them to change it. And so we don't really have a defined place where we're expecting users to be able to do whatever they want, mess around with the files, possibly make mistakes. And so we need a separate path specifically for this problem. And that's what the user configuration path is all about. It gives us a place where we are expecting the user to make changes. It doesn't change between runs of the program. And so it's perfect for these kinds of user config type files. And finally, there's sometimes where it makes sense to have a file that we want to keep around for some period of time, but we don't really want the user to have to see it or deal with it. We don't want it to pollute their paths. And we kind of want to have it marked in some way as being something that's safe to delete. And these are files that contain things like cache data that we can recover if we lose it, but it does help accelerate things or backup data in case we are doing something that we think might go wrong and we want to have a way of restoring to the correct state in case something does go wrong. So stuff like that is going to go into a temp files path. I ended up going through a lot of APIs on this one, and the annoying thing with all these string APIs is that each one is a little bit different. So you have to take a lot of care to read the documentation carefully and test it and see that the results match what you want and probably also read your code over once just to make sure it doesn't have anything too silly in it either but you know a lot of things to watch out for are like does this function that i'm calling return the size to me or not does it uh, force me to allocate a buffer of a particular minimum size does it return the size to me with the included null terminator under the condition that when it fails what about when it succeeds all that kind of stuff since sometimes it's not clear what it's going to do, I have a couple spots here and there where I might be doing something a little bit slower than I need to be doing, uh, just because it seemed like a more likely to succeed without having to run through lots of trials and errors and possibly only work under certain conditions or something weird like that. Another thing in this case that I consider that's not just about the string API changing from one call to the next, but particularly about the file path rules is that I'm trying to make sure all of our calls have a consistent rule. So I'm going to say whenever something returns a path, that path does not include the slash. 
uh, and that's how most of the APIs we're calling here work too, but there is one that does include the backslash. For now, I'm just subtracting that out. That might cause a bug down the line if it doesn't consistently do what it says it does in the docs. So maybe the better thing to do would be to check if there's a slash and remove it in that case. Uh, but for the most part, I think this looks like it's good now. It works. We're getting the paths that I'm interested in having. So that's it for today. Mm -hmm.